In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace and peace of God our Father, the love of the Lord Jesus Christ, and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Spirit. We're gathered this morning and led to prayer by our God, who loves us unconditionally. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Son of God, you change every life. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Son of justice, you are light in our darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, shout with joy for Jacob, exalt at the head of the nations. Proclaim your praise and say, the Lord has delivered his people, the remnant of Israel. Behold, I will bring them back from the land of the north. I will gather them from the ends of the world with the blind and the lame in their midst, the mothers and those with child. They shall return as an immense throng. They departed in tears, but I will console them and guide them. I will lead them to brooks of water on a level road so that none shall stumble. For I am a father to Israel. Ephraim is my firstborn. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
a reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, every high priest is taken from among men and made their representative before God to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal patiently with the ignorant and erring, for he himself is beset by weakness. And so for this reason must make sin offerings for himself as well as for the people. No one takes this honor upon himself, but only when called by God, just as Aaron was. In the same way, it was not Christ who glorified himself in becoming high priest, but rather the one who said to him, You are my son. This day I have begotten you. Just as he says in another place, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a sizable crowd, Bartimaeus, a blind man, the son of Timaeus, sat by the roadside begging. On hearing that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have pity on me. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he kept calling out all the more, Son of David, have pity on me. Jesus stopped and said, Call him. So they called the blind man, saying to him, Take courage, get up, Jesus is calling you. He threw aside his cloak, sprang up, and came to Jesus. Jesus said to him in reply, What do you want me to do for you? The blind man replied to him, Master, I want to see. Jesus told him, Go your way. Your faith has saved you. Immediately he received his sight and followed him on the way. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. One method to help us understand scripture is to use your imagination to put yourself into the scene, first as an observer and then as one of the characters. When you take the role of the observer, you try to imagine the sights, sounds, and even the smells of the scene. When I did that with this passage, I was surprised at what caught my attention. Surprisingly, it wasn't Jesus or Bartimaeus, who was an example of how to respond when we get called by Jesus. No, my attention was drawn to the crowds who tried to quiet Bartimaeus. Why would anyone prevent a person in need from calling on Jesus? Compare their response to the friends of the paralytic in chapter 2 of Mark's Gospel. When the friends couldn't get the paralytic to Jesus because of the crowds, they went up on the roof, opened the roof up, and lowered him in front of Jesus. Here the people tell Bartimaeus to be quiet. Mark doesn't tell us who these people were. 
Were they citizens of Jericho who were embarrassed by the presence of Bartimaeus? At this stage in Jesus' ministry, they would have known that Jesus could heal Bartimaeus. Were they embarrassed? Because as a society, the citizens of Jericho were not taking care of the less fortunate in their midst. Jesus had instructed his followers that the sick, orphaned, and widowed were special to God, and it was the duty of the fortunate members of society to look after them. Perhaps they were Jesus' disciples. In the beginning of this chapter in Mark's Gospel, the disciples tried to prevent children from coming to Jesus. Even though Jesus rebuked them for that, perhaps they thought it would be all right in this case because Jesus needed to get to Jerusalem and this would delay him. All this caused me to think about my actions. In RCIA, stories are told by participants who had to give up friends because Jesus was calling them to a different lifestyle. It made me wonder about my own actions. Have any of my actions towards others kept them from believing in Jesus? As a disciple of Jesus, a word spoken in anger or an email critical of someone sent thoughtlessly could keep somebody from coming to Jesus. When an infant is baptized, the parents are presented with a candle lit from the Paschal candle as a symbol of the light of Christ that is now in the newly baptized child. We all receive the light of Christ when we were baptized. Do we reflect that light to others by our words and deeds? We should ask ourselves, are my actions like the friends of the paralytic or like the crowds in today's gospel telling Bartimaeus to be quiet? I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come, amen. Let us pray that God's light may illumine our minds and heart and guide us in God's peace. For all who serve the church, that they may gather us and unite us as God's holy people, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For each of us, that we may seek to follow Christ by becoming a people of compassion, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders in government, that they may uphold and protect the sacred dignity of every person, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are disabled, that they may be given the grace and wisdom that they need to grow in God's grace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who feel abandoned by God, that with our help and support, they may embrace the love and hope of the Father, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, 
that they may one day awake and arise in the light of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord of light, restore us with your vision of selfless love so that we may make real in our lives the prayers and hopes that you alone see in the depths of our hearts. Hear the prayers which we ask of you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Robert our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. So the Lord be always with you. Peace be with you, Robert. May this ring of the body of the Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us to receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
As we take this time of thanksgiving, let us pray for all those who are in need of our prayers this day, especially those who may be ill and at home, in need of God's healing grace. Bless those who are in nursing homes or rehab rehabilitation facilities, that God may give them the healing that they need. And let us pray that God will give us the grace this day to do his will in our lives. Let us now stand and pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs we may one day possess in truth through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorify the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Thank you.